for being the patron, Joseph. Thank you, Nick and Joseph, for all of the support as I dreamed up what I was going to say today. And thank you for the opening song, Keelan, and the opening prayer, Kim, and the meditation, Myers, because all I seem to hear today, each of everything that's gone before my speaking in such an alive way. And that's what we're here to do today. We're here to bring our dreams, that which is calling us at this time when there is so much upheaval, not even change going on in our world transformation, holding on to what was, a letting go of what we see as possibilities. And I'm going to start with, thanks to Nick, a quote from last January 2021, when he was in the spotlight for our writing our letters of intention. And the quote is from Ernest Holmes. Life is a blackboard upon which we consciously or unconsciously write those messages which govern us. We hold the chalk and the eraser in our hand, but are ignorant of this fact. The hand which holds the eraser must do its neutralizing work. So there is room to write down what we want to experience for ourselves and the world. So I've given a lot of thought to intention. I listened to last year's messages, two of which have had tension in the title, both of which Patrick and I spoke of last year. And I want to make a distinction between goals, between intention, and between manifestation. You know, goals are often the action. What we want to do, we want to lose weight exercise more regularly. We want to be kinder, be more loving, moves us into the realm of intention, where we're naming the quality, the inner quality that will give life through the action. And so as we think about our intentions, we think about what is it that is calling us? What are the seeds that are calling us to tend to from the inside out, to cultivate, to fertilize, so that the manifestation takes place, so that those seeds come to form in our 3D reality. So, so often I have thought that my goal is out there and what do I have to do to get there? And what I have learned, certainly what gets reinforced weekly through our gatherings is that I have to be the qualities So that if I want to take off weight, really writing down a number of pounds is, are the actions, are the focus, are the result. But what do I really want? I want to be healthy. I want to be able to live life to the fullest. That's what I want to manifest. That's the energy that I choose to bring to life. And I'm going to share a story. It happened 
1975, but had its roots long before that. So I started smoking cigarettes when I was 16. And probably when I was about 20, I started quitting, which meant I set a goal to quit smoking cigarettes. And the quitting went on until 1975. Because one day, I, after years of writing New Year's resolutions about quitting smoking, stopping smoking, I was no longer going to smoke. One day, as the end of 1974 was approaching, it was though a ticker went across the inside of my mind. And the word health popped up. And I realized that there was something bigger about stopping smoking. And I just want to say during these years that I was quitting, on my way to quitting, my dad died of lung cancer. So even that didn't stop me. But that word health became my New Year's resolution, my New Year's intention for 1975. And that's when I quit. And I still consider that one of my biggest accomplishments, not only the quitting smoking, but really getting that I had to go underneath the action, inside the action to what would be different if I quit smoking. I feel healthier. I feel more confident in my ability to achieve what I say I want to achieve. But it was that bigger word. It was the manifestation. And I was struck by what Kim said in the opening prayer. And I looked for a pen, so I may not have gotten the words correctly, but it was Joan Didion's words of, of um, something about, you know, I'm no longer who I used to be. And that's what today is about. There is a call in the world for love that I have never heard so loud before, not simply in my personal life, but in the world. And I was struck by words that I also didn't grab the pen fast enough to write them down, possibly exactly in the opening song, swing wide the doors. I'm not holding back anymore. The truth of life is that if we don't live our lifetime goals, our lifetime vision, truly our calling, and my calling is to be a mighty expression of love in the world. If I don't live that calling each day, I might not get to live it because we don't know our end point. So what if I live every day as the last line of an Apache morning prayer, which is today is a good day to die. Not necessarily physically or, my, or it might be, but what it's like when we think we're gonna be seeing someone or something for the last time. There's an awareness there's an aliveness. And for some of us, it's a good day to die to the self-sabotaging thoughts we have, to the fear and anxiety we carry, to the lack of trust in divine timing, and that the light is always present in us, that we are an expression of the loving energy of the universe, whether or not we remember it at times. And so today 
in community. You know, there's the, there's the quote from Matthew, for where two or three are gathered, there I am. I left out some of the words, but you know, I wanna say something about this. We might think, whoa, I need to be with someone else for the divine to be present. Well, I particularly need the divine present when the voice of my ego and the voice of my intuition start capturing my attention. So I consider that my internal two or more being gathered and the reminder that at that time, the divine is also present. So in community, common unity, we gather to feed our spirit, to uplift us, to know we're not alone when we feel isolated and separate, when we're on that place in the spiral of life where we can't see the light and we think it's not there. It's there and this is the gift of today that in community we're invited to write our intentions and so i have some instructions that joseph is going to put up on the screen to offer some direction in my personal evolution of manifestation of allowing from the caterpillar to the not knowing of what I am in the chrysalis to becoming a butterfly that has transformed and is no longer its former self although its former beingness was required to thrive, to be all it can be. Okay, Joseph, would you put up the screen, please, of the instructions? Yes, I will. Keel, and I just have to boot you from sharing for a minute just to remind you. Can you see that? Yes. No. Thank you, Joseph, for your technical expertise. So I started this with a quote, a quote that's really powerful for me and is actually on a mask that I made many years ago when I lived in, in Arizona. And it's a quote by Anais Nin, which is, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. So the call today, the invitation today is to give voice to the blossoming that is calling you for this new year. And one way to possibly do it is to choose a word for the year that expresses the overarching intention that you have. And a word is easier to remember than a lot of words. So choose a word for this year. And then write your letter in the present tense as though you are living it as a way of making it clear to the loving energy of the universe to the one verse of the university of the universe, which is yes. Use your word to explore and deepen and expand in the present tense. And then how are you expressing your word in your thoughts, your words and actions in 2022? And this, this list will continue to be up during our time of writing together. Consider the following aspects of your life, your work, 
career, your calling, your creativity, your passions, your hobbies, your physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being, people and relationships in your life, including your relationship with yourself, financial freedom, and service and community. So as preparation for the five minutes of writing we will do today, which may be a start for some of us on our letter, for others of us, that may be all it takes. Not one way is more right than the other. And I invite you now to close your eyes or soften your gaze. Just take a moment knowing that the veil has been raised. Take a full conscious deep breath. Exhale completely. Place your hands on your heart. And ask your heart this question, a question from Mary Oliver. Tell me, what is it I plan to do with my one wild and precious heart in 20? 22. Who is it I plan to be with my one precious and wild life in 2022? Who am I being in 20? 22. I'm setting a timer for five minutes right now, after which you'll hear a chime to begin your letter now.
and gently wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and open your eyes, noticing where you are as though you're seeing this place for the very first time. And know, K-N-O-W, that you have set in motion. You have partnered with your co-creative partner, God, loving energy of the universe, infinite energy, that you have partnered with source, saying yes to that which you become. 